Okay. So not much has changed since Friday, as you can see. <clears throat> Minor push to the upside. But something to note today which kind of influenced my bias. Um as we're going through our time frames, going into more of an intraday perspective, right? We are technically bullish in terms of low high initial break of structure initial break of structure solidified high pull back break of the preliminary high making this solidified low solidified low confirmed to the upside but this once we start zooming in i see one two sorry uh one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven mitigations to the upside and we are barely coming into the previous high signifying to me potentially weak order flow potentially a sign of reversal so because we acknowledge that let me go back into my time frames and see if there is anything interesting, right? I see because we are bullish, right? Based on um, low break of structure, unwillingness, break of structure, retracement, we are bullish in terms of a structural perspective. That means that this is our liquidity point that we are targeting after that we cannot judge until we get the um until we get the reaction based on how we take the liquidity but until then you can assume that the liquidity will be taken and that is exactly what happened so something to note is i see a pretty significant poi here very significant because there's an inefficiency right there we didn't even reach the 50 percent of the inefficiency so that is poi number one po number two is the inefficiency poi number three is the wick inside and why is the wick valid because we follow se rules in terms of taking liquidity and a semi-violent move to the opposite direction so we have weak order flow we have liquidities taken we have a potential poi now it's just a matter of studying the reaction inside of the optimal time of entry right and i unfortunately i didn't act on this based on eu but i acted on it on gu and i'll show you why um beginner i mean first things first though we see character one character two right meaning this is the low that created the final high that was taken out right and we have a retracement based on a mitigation which creates the reversal so now because we got the continuation bos the unwillingness and the break of structure right my point of validation is here so we have taken out the preliminary leg but we haven't taken out the full leg this is the last time right that we saw a significant pullback which then led to a final push to the upside um so i do see this potentially taking that out um it makes sense to me unless we see some very weird uh minor uh i'm sorry some very strong momentum to the upside and we don't react from here that is very not i would, I would say very unlikely but it's still a possibility because we have just taken liquidity and this could easily reverse on us so that is primarily why i didn't really want to take anything on eu right because from a minor intraday perspective we are still bearish right so i didn't want to pick a low and the only way i'm going to pick a low right is if we came back into the lowest poi possible Right, I don't really like to play based on solely 
taking liquidity because it is considered taking a low. For example, liquidity was taken, right? And if I wanted to act on that, it's a bit hard because we only have the continuation BOS, but this is not a sign of reversal. It's a sign of the pullback, right? Hence why, hence why this played out this morning, right? And this is 100% a great sell if you're looking at it from an intraday perspective, right? It's 100% okay. Um, but as you can see, right, break even, right? Once we see that we don't take out the low, create a pullback, then we create unwillingness and a break of structure, this is now invalid and nor potentially now a liquidity point. So the thing is, is the only way I'm going to take a position in this scenario is if that is taken out and we have a discount. That's the only way because I'd be picking a low. I'm assuming that we're going to reverse and that doesn't, that's not necessarily how I want to play. I want a type of narrative shown to me and I want a reason to actually want to risk in terms of being conservative, in terms of not wanting to pick a low. So that didn't happen. And so I personally just didn't want to touch this. Um, so didn't touch that. Uh, this one was a weird one. Looking at AU. Right, there was actually a, a very nice position that I was looking at. I believe it was um, here, not last night, but I believe two nights ago. Uh, I'll show you in a bit. Um, but same thing here in terms of continuation, it makes all the sense in the world. Right, and let me actually, one second. Seven, five, eight, nine. Okay, so does anybody remember what we covered on Friday in terms of here? Does anybody remember? I don't fully remember, but I'm pretty sure I know what I said. That's why I'm kind of, it's kind of why I'm asking. Does anybody remember what we said on Friday in terms of AU? Anybody? Did anybody watch the Zoom? Decisive point? Something like that? Yep. Yep. So the reason why I left that there is because in terms of looking at this from the perspective of essentially looking at the buys that occurred last week, right? The entire week was a retracement buy. And the reason why I didn't want to get into that was even though there is good opportunity, for example, the entry we talked about 75.1, it gave almost 100 pips, right? But that would have been a week long swing uh, and it is a corrective move. So you can't count on that. Um, so as we're seeing, right, bullish movement, right? Meaning this is now a decisive point. Decisive point was taken out. Not only that, structure was breaking, I mean, was taken out, right? And once we close for the week, right, we got this weird, I mean, and once we opened as well, we got some very weird movement here. Um, but that is stuff that, in my opinion, is inefficient. It doesn't fit the narrative, it doesn't mean anything. So I'd rather just wait for price to show a 10. Um, but something to note here now is right we have high break of structure low move to the upside two 
then create liquidity gives a bearish liquidity grab but as soon as we come make essentially one two three relative equal highs we gave a solidified high and then we took liquidity so because there's a lot of liquidity sitting here we now have a bearish liquidity grab so we have a bullish liquidity grab followed by a bearish liquidity grab in terms of here not only that but even though i see this as potentially inefficient i still see it as a high and a low right if i see this as a high right meaning i can only be bullish if this takes is taken out on top of the fact that we have a high low right because we took structure Right, even if this could be seen as I wouldn't consider that a bullish break of structure for one because of when it's happening, but I still consider this a high. So I will see this as unwillingness after taking liquidity, making a liquidity grab, dictating a bearish narrative. So it makes all the sense in the world for me to look at this high low retracement, right? And my position, right? For one we see potential turbulence points inside of here because this is where the interruptions led to the full break of structure. Um, and as we zoom in, right, there is a potential POI here, but we see the inefficiency there, meaning this is a potential candle of interest as we zoom in more h2 i mean m2 not ma not making much sense to me but m1 makes a lot more sense to me so we have the wick of interest the mitigation the continuation of order flow if we mitigate here so my position was a limit here a bit over two pip stop and that break even, but I mean, I was asleep during this time. Um, and currently trailing one to 30. Very nice. Um, yeah, very nice. Not much to say here, right? Monday's move didn't really matter to me. I don't really like trading Mondays anyway, so why not trade London? Just my opinion. Um, now for the trade of today, right, GU, still going for me, nice. Um, anyways, something to note, right, is even though we see a potential bull, uh, bearish liquidity grab based on taking this, in terms of an overall scale, we are still bullish, right? Because we are still potentially, right? Looking at this, looking at this from an overall perspective, right? One, two, three, optimism, potential phase E. And what am I referencing here? one there we go what am i referencing one two three optimism phase d phase e that's what i'm referencing so if i have an excuse to want to be long it makes all the sense in the world for me to want to be long because it doesn't make sense for this to come down here and then come back up that's why i don't trust schematics that are for example like that that doesn't make sense from a wyckoff perspective this does not look like this right and especially if it doesn't fit volume if especially if it doesn't fit momentum especially if it doesn't fit the overall narrative um anyways back to here right i am potentially looking for technically a reversal from a major entry perspective but my swing position bias is still the same Right, even if we see a minor interruption based on this wick, the interruption is temporary because we know where our directional bias is. So, based on that, 
right? What am I seeing here? I'm obviously seeing bearishness in terms of high break of structure, low retracement, continuation, retracement, continuation. But this this continuation is not anything like this, right? When you compare this to this, right? This is much more slower. So that is very alerting in my opinion. Right, so taking this out. Right, like we were talking about, this, right, did not reach the potential POI that we would have wanted for for the cell continuation. So now, I promise you, if we do reach back up here, people will try to sell. And it doesn't make sense now because we have solidified points. And that is technically picking a high if you want that continuation. So in reality, you'll probably get something like that if we reach back up here now. And if we do reach back up here, it'll only happen if we make a solidified low from a minor intraday, meaning we take the preliminary leg out. We'll zoom in there in a bit. Um, but, right, first things first, right? Compare this move to this move. It's very clear this is much slower. Momentum is slowing down and we're starting to fit the narrative of the overall bias. So when I woke up today, um, the first thing I see, right, I know Luis, I know Luis caught this uh, earlier last week, right, and I did like this as a potential schematic, and I do see a potential wick that created the move to the upside, meaning a reference point. So I don't, that's all I really care for right here. I don't really care for going to M15, M5, M1, picking the exact low. Why? Because technically I am picking a low from a major intraday. So in order for this to convert and give me upside movement, it's going to have uh, to give me a very clear setup. It, it's it's going to take some time for this to reverse on me. And, and let me show you what I mean by that. Um, as we are coming here into the reference point, Right, once again here. See what I mean by these schematics don't make sense. These specific schematics don't make sense. This is what schematic four in that document I have in the in the um in the Discord, right? Pretty much looking just like this. Something like that. Right, I don't trust it, it doesn't make sense. Right, so for one, right, you could say we are seeing a continuation BOS, a potential reversal, the final leg being taken out. But you got to keep in mind that that is only the retracement of high, low retracement. So, right, I'm not trying to buy here. I think that's picking a low. I think that doesn't make sense. I think you're trying to guess a reversal. It doesn't make sense. So, Right, we're technically bearish, right? Because we have high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, right? And this is the first time we're seeing any type of structure breaks, meaning this is now the pullback of high, low retracement. So let me take all that off. Anyways, right, so why is this red line here important? Right, this line dictates to me, right, as a potential liquidity grab. So the only way I'm gonna take a continuation here is if, we react from a POI. So as you can see, that is the only candle that makes sense, but the candle was mitigated. So I'm trying to see what happens here, what happened here? So what do we see?
equal highs. Equal highs are then taken out, right? But we take this liquidity out as well and then give the preliminary structure break signaling to me a bearish liquidity grab, bearish movement, a continuation of the high up here. So the only thing that makes sense to me is this continuation. And this was my initial position today. Right, we see mitigation, internal break of structure, entry. This is my entry. So entry one, break even, right? Remember what we said about solidified lows? This is the last time we see a solidified low. So this is a great TP1 from an intraday perspective, because even though I am continuing order flow, let's, let's also be realistic here. I am selling deep, deep in a discount. So from an overall perspective, if I can find my places to take partials, I'm going to take my partials, right? Because I noticed that a lot of you guys will try to sell here and expect price to come down here. That's not realistic because the impulse has already occurred. So you're that you see what I mean by buy low so high, buy lower so higher, not sell low, not buy high. You see what I mean? Um so with that being said, this was my initial target. Here, initial target that was taken out, right? TP1 was achieved right but here's where the the interesting part occurs right because on top of the fact that we mitigated and then i caught the mitigation of that something that gave me a clear sign was strong supply coming in based on the liquidity grab increasing the probability of the trade so as we come lower we still see high supply so technically i don't see much of a problem and I do see liquidity being purged eventually. So now, right, we do see that we are mitigating out of here. Right, and I noticed this, but I hesitated to buy here because I'm technically picking, a, I'm literally picking a low. So it's, it doesn't make sense. High supply, um, bearish liquidity grab, bearish order flow in play. It doesn't make sense, you know? So even uh, even though i noted that we see that price here gave us unwillingness based on this low why is it unwillingness because we have a high low high low preliminary structure break solidified low we did not break previous low unwillingness okay so we have the unwillingness in play, right? And even though we are still bearish, right, we're coming back for this mitigation here. The mitigation is now in play, right? And if you notice in the picture that I sent in the group, I had this highlighted because I wanted to take the continuation here but after this low here, which I didn't get. Right, I was trying to get this inefficiency fill right here. But as you can see, we have a low retracement, unwillingness, liquidity grab to the downside. So this POI is now invalid. If we reach back up here, like we did, it's gonna break through because you're now breaking a structure and this is now picking high. You see what I mean? Um, <clears throat> so the thing is, Right, we didn't reach here, so the order flow is, in my opinion, not the strongest anymore. Two, look at the supply. It is greatly diminished, even though we're seeing very impulsive moves, right? So now we have to think bigger picture. What was the original thing that we were looking at? This. We're thinking bigger picture. So... I'm still in my position. I took my partial. I'm going to risk my partial profits for a potential hedge position. So as we are 
now continuing lower I see an inefficiency fill here so I took my hedge position here my hedge position is in play oops sorry my hedge position here I believe it was a two something yeah 2.3 so this position aiming obviously for right the previous high right not the mitigation because if we if we bought here and now we're coming back up here this is now unwillingness well let me draw that this is now unwillingness based on unwillingness based on solidified low based on poi meaning bullish order flow okay so bullish order flow is in play we take structure out making this solidified low like we said dictating to me that it's time to reverse but it only made sense because of volume instability it only made sense because of uh the even though the order flow was technically strong we never broke a, the overall leg Right, and I'm also hedging being dynamic with this based on after being bearish here. So no matter what, I'm going to win. And as you can see, my TP1. Oh, my intraday TP1, I'm sorry. This would be scalp TP1. Intraday TP1 is already a 1 to 10. And this is still going currently for 12 to 12, 1 to 12, I'm sorry. Um, so let me take all these drawings out because this is now confirmed something for me okay so we have now taken out the final leg to the downside right and even though we had a liquidity grab that has also now been taken out meaning we have now have a conversion Of structure a conversion of order flow right and taking everything aside what do i see here one two three four five resupply resupply one two three four five right seeing a, a type of conversion right keep in mind high volume after as a potential lps right we have our selling climax all right secondary test initial optimism right unwillingness lps1 lps2 right not the best overall schematic but it makes sense then the climax, secondary test, unwillingness, LPS, optimism. Right, so the only way this fails now is if we're referencing the entire leg and this now being in a premium, right, even though we are technically reacting currently. From here are we actually no we're not sorry right here currently out of here so in my opinion if we break this low the idea is invalid right so I actually have stops somewhere around here um, and from there we'll see where this goes either we're gonna catch a really nice reversal or we're not either or so will we see a late london move or will we see right this being just a potential fake out and seeing a bullish engulfing on h4 maybe even see some higher movement up here and we can even potentially see a very good daily closure which would give us optimism to the upside so who knows if this is time for all we know this could close just as is and this could even come in and take the liquidity 
given to us in the relative equal lows, even though it is potentially a mitigation, they are technically relative equal lows. So there's still the possibility that this could be 100% wrong, and we can still come down here and then go higher, right? So that's pretty much today's lecture. There isn't any efficiency there too. So who knows? Could reach down here and then go higher. Who knows? We'll see by tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I mean, for all we know, I'm hoping this sustains us above. But yeah, with that being said, uh, that's pretty much today's lecture. Honestly, I think I'm going to cut that out and I probably, I'll probably make that a video. Because I went pretty in depth on that one. But yeah, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, that was a pretty long one. Ugh. Any questions, anybody? Or did you guys fall asleep on my lecture? <laughs> But yeah, does that make sense though? Does the entry make sense? It's hard to see all without second time frames. It just depends what you're trying to trade. Depends what you're trying to trade. Because in terms of in if you're an intraday trader, all right, let's actually Alright, I'll delete this. It's already on video anyway. Actually, no, I'm not gonna delete everything. It depends what you're trading. If you're trying to copy me, then yeah, obviously you're gonna need seconds time frames, but you shouldn't have to copy me. It doesn't, it, it's irrational for you to try to copy me. What you, what, if you're looking at this from an intraday perspective, right, I'm seeing on literally on this time frame, what am I seeing? I'm seeing a continuation BOS, a leg being broken out, potential bullish liquidity grab. But as you can see, there is a continuation to the downside. But if once you start zooming in, you see that this is a solidified high, I mean solidified low, sorry. What the hell? A solidified low. And if you go back to the same time frame, that's a great position to take. If you're wanting to be conservative, 10 pips stop, and you're aiming for higher up here. That's a good way to start. Yeah, man, you just started. No need to, no need to worry. So if you're looking to be conservative, you don't need seconds time frames. You need seconds time frames if you're wanting to be aggressive. But you have to weigh in the thing, you have to weigh in both options. Am I trying to be conservative with a higher win rate? and more than likely win majority of my trades? Or am I trying to be aggressive, right? Even though you can be conservatively aggressive, that takes high level thinking, high level experience, right? Because if you don't have that, you'll probably take a lot of losses wanting to play seconds time frames, right? And you, you don't have to tell me yes or no, but I'm pretty sure you guys know, you know. So for example, right? Like is, uh, what's his name? Let me see, is he on here? No, Tomas isn't on the call. So Tomas will take his entries off a of 15 second break of structure. I will not do that. I No, I'm good. Because if I do that, I know I'm gonna take a lot of losses. I'm not saying he takes a lot of losses, right? But I personally will take a lot of losses if I do that. So you see what I mean by conservatively aggressive. Right, another example, Kos, right? Kos does the same thing. Right, his actually no, his are his is a bit more. His his isn't 15 second break of structure. He's more of he likes to take limits on minute time frames, and he knows how to find good POIs. If I do that same thing, I'm gonna be guessing POIs, and I'm gonna take losses. You see what I mean? Which is why over time my style is more order flow based. Right, so it's the point of you in here is not to copy somebody. It's to find your own style and make it make sense out of your own understanding.
because that applies to anything from working out in the fields to building houses to making a trading plan to working out you see what i mean principle over concept but yeah we'll see so we'll see where this goes best case this will be a solid trade And the thing is, is if we do reach up here, then this final leg to the downside is taken out. And that is now giving us signs of wanting to come back up here. Oh, not up there, but up into the inefficiency would be my next target. But yeah, I'm probably going to cut that out. Hopefully make that a, uh, make that a, uh, a video. But yeah, does anybody have any questions? Okay, yeah, that closed pretty bullish as well. Yeah, we following order flow, but this is looking weak. Yeah, who knows? We'll we'll know by the end of today where this ends up. But eh, I got no reason to close. I got no reason to close. What do you mean? Oh, okay, okay. You're talking about you're talking about here. You're talking about here, right? Yeah. So here's here's what you have to think about. What is my higher term bias? What is my medium term bias? What is my smaller term bias? My smaller term bias is bearish, because even though I'm bullish long term. Right. In order for me to catch a good RR trade in terms of a swing, I have to technically catch a reversal on a minor intraday and a scalp time frame. That's the only way I'm going to get it, because if I wait, a lot of the times you won't get the best entry and you'll usually catch yourself buying. Or if you're looking at a long, then you'll catch yourself buying in a premium. Right. So you have to understand the conversions. Um, and that's why unwillingness, that's why solidified lows is such a good concept to know because i wouldn't have taken this trade without this being unwillingness and a confirmed low based on the preliminary structure break so i'm being dynamic right in terms of i'm gonna either buy or sell with depending on what i'm given but either way i know what my bias is if i don't understand what my bias is i'm just guessing whichever direction and that could technically work in in in, in theory because um you're gonna win no matter what direction you get. But I think it's good to have a case built. Without a case built, it's harder to justify a position. But yeah, all this, keep in mind, even though we reacted from the POI, right? That doesn't mean that, <clears throat> that doesn't mean that just this initial reaction is a sign of reversal. You need this to give us you know that construction that 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 conversion of price yeah man it's yeah thank you but i hope it makes sense that's the that's the entire point if it doesn't make sense then you know but yeah i think uh i think that's all for today That was pretty much today's lecture. I didn't expect to trade so much today. Took a break even on AU. Did I actually explain that? Did I did I talk about that? The AU? Actually I don't think I did. Did I? This was what um pretty much here. Alright, just just a quick summary even because it was just a break even. We are bearish. Momentum. Execution, we came down here, I, I moved my stop loss to break even, even though I should have waited for down here. Um, but either way, no matter what I would have done, I still would have ended up break even. But you could see that the character shift here broke even a potential turbulence point here, which on seconds time frames. You could see this generated the final high. That was taken out with momentum, and I caught the mitigation. 
and I just broke even. And yeah, that's Slotfest right now. Slotfest. Gold today? Let's see. What did you sell today? Which one? Uh, you go find minute. Wait, what? Where? Uh, from the first... Oh, you sold here? Uh, let's see. But why did you sell there? That's a fucking, that's a hundred pip move. Damn. I don't really know why though. Let's see on higher time frame. Okay, so you just caught the old continuation. That's good, though. I mean, fuck. That's 130 pips. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I mean, it's gold. But that's a big move. Nice. Nice. But yeah, I'm good on gold. <laughs> this can pay you if you play it right. This will pay you if, if you play it right. This one's been so sloppy too over the past couple months. I want to say I'm bullish, but technically this is very strong. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, I think uh, I think we're good for today. I swear I had something to talk about, but I forgot. I'll just bring it up on Friday. You say, oh, yeah, no. I, I, I only trade what you see. I only trade what you see, bro. Um, what's the oil future again? I forgot what the... Yeah, I'll try to do it by today. I'll see if I can do it right now before I have to leave. I have to leave in 15 minutes. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember what the oil feature is. Because you know how it's, how like ES1, this is the S&P. I don't know what the future is for oil. Forgot. Ah, oh, CL1. There we go. CL1. There it is. Oh, wow. I remember this. No, I'm, I'm bullish on this 100%. 100%. Yeah, bullish on this. All time highs. All time highs for sure. No doubt in my mind. We swept one, two. Oh, I'm sorry. We swept one, two, three, four lows. And then came instantly back up. We're coming, we're coming here, and we're coming here. 
Yeah, it's a 70 per barrel right now. It's not bad. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, bullish for sure. No doubt in my mind. I mean, if, and the cool thing is, is like, this is where you apply theory and stuff. You don't, you don't necessarily need to buy oil up until here, up until here. You could buy a lot of uh, commodity driven assets that can, that are based on crude oil, right? And you catch a overall move. Same thing with gold. Once gold is bullish, you can invest in miners. You can invest in gold futures. You can invest in gold driven, I mean, gold driven assets. Yep, and those are your those are your long term plays because those are commodities, and those are for example if if the dollar if once the once the dollar finally goes to shit, moon, gold moon silver moon, right? But that's more of a that's more of a finance thing. That's not necessarily a, a trading thing. Cryptos, I don't know about cryptos, bro. I I wouldn't say cryptos, bro. I wouldn't I wouldn't say like if dollar goes down that doesn't mean BTC is going up that doesn't that's not how that works oh wow that actually is giving optimism though this is good yeah this is good All right remember what we said about here it looks like it's time yeah yeah, it looks very bullish in my opinion now. From a structural perspective, in terms of a order flow perspective, this is disruption. Liquidity grab, as we said, is a spring potentially. Yeah, this looks bullish to at least come back up here. Now, I don't know what happens after here, right? But this is a good immediate target. And that's already, you know. Like I know some people in buys from here. That's a good. That's a good position. Because look, bearish liquidity grab. Bullish liquidity grab. Right. Same thing with GU. Bearish liquidity grab followed by a bullish liquidity grab. You see what I mean? But yeah, I mean, I'll end it off here though, cause uh, I do have I have to go do a couple of things. I have to go to the gym and I have to go pick up my sibling from school. But yeah, guys, uh, thank you for hopping on, and I'll see you guys on Friday.